It's been more than 10 years since the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And we wanted to see firsthand the long-term environmental impact from the spill a decade later. Tonight in the special Full Circle Report, ABC Action News reporter Wendy Lane goes in depth on how that spill is still affecting the Gulf and how the tragedy is being used to help restore marine life. The Gulf of Mexico. We know it for its salty aqua water, powdery sand, and that it's home to thousands of species of marine life. But beneath the surface, there's still so much we don't know. And scientists are finally learning how oil from more than a decade ago continues to impact it. On April 20th, 2010, a BP oil rig called Deepwater Horizon exploded 50 miles off the coast of Louisiana. We continue the search and rescue case. The 11 people are unaccounted for. 11 people were killed and the explosion triggered the biggest marine oil spill in global history. All hell broke loose. There was so much unknown because there had never been a deep water blowout like that, a mile deep. Oil gushed from the leak for 87 days before it was finally capped. A total of 5 million barrels of oil spilled into the Gulf, polluting the water, killing marine life, and causing America's largest environmental disaster. A disaster that still lingers in the Gulf more than 10 years later. Currently, there's a substantial amount of that oil still in the environment. BP was forced to pay $18.7 billion in fines, the largest corporate settlement in U.S. history. Most of that money going into something called the Restore Act to help the Gulf recover. It was a lot of money that was made available to the academic community to study the long-term impacts. <clears throat> For 10 years, USF Marine Science Professor Stephen Morosky has headed the $40 million research program. This is the RV Weatherbird 2. It's basically a floating laboratory that USF scientists took out into the Gulf of Mexico to find out the long-term impact of the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. This ship, the tool for that research. From testing the sediment all over the bottom of the Gulf and keeping a library of that tested sediment for future reference. You guys were researching the long-term impact. What are some of your findings? Oil that's stranded in the deep bottom of the Gulf um, will not be landfilled by you know, sequential sediment you know, deposition for another 100 years. Morosky says that oil on the bottom of the Gulf is still impacting marine life, especially in fish and dolphins near the spill site. Even now, we see very low reproduction rates for those animals. He says of all the fish they've studied in the Gulf, they still have yet to find one without traces of oil on it. it correct me if I'm wrong, that every single fish you guys pulled out had some kind of trace of Correct. We've, we analyzed over 2,000 fishes um, for their contamination with the, the most toxic components of oil, which are called PAHs and every single one that we analyzed had a certain level of PAHs. But despite all the tragedy, not all hope is lost. Things are being done to help. Money from the Restore Act is now making its way to coastal communities to help restore the Gulf. This project is really exactly what the Restore money was intended for. I rode out with Keith Colasso with the Hernando County Marine and Waterways Division, who is on a mission to help the Gulf. Right off my bow, like 50 feet, you'll be good. And out here 20 miles off the coast of Hernando County, that Restore Act money is helping projects like this, these artificial reefs that are being dropped into the water to create habitat for marine life. What we see on the artificial reef structure is the fish populate it within just a couple of weeks. And there's up to 30, 35 species of fish out here in the artificial reefs. Things like gag grouper, red grouper, um, Spanish mackerel, flounder, the whole gamut of what people come fishing for. The fish mesmerizing. The man-made structures, an underwater menagerie for divers to explore. 
And while their program is creating an area for fish to thrive, an aquarium is using the money to help animals survive. The deep water horizon oil spill impacted a, a lot of uh, marine life. Abby Stone heads the stranded program at Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Essentially, we were awarded funds that helped to enhance our program. Money from the Restore Act is used to help animals who are stranded on the beach. Like when this pod of five pilot whales were stranded on Reddington Beach in 2019. And it's helped rescue dolphins like Rudy. Hi, Rudy. A resident rough-toothed dolphin who was found stranded on the beach, deaf and not able to return to the wild. A wild that is alive and vulnerable. Given the importance of the ocean to us in Florida and you know people in the United States, we need to make more investments in our understanding of how ecosystems work. Scientists say the silver lining is now they know more about oil spills than ever before. But what they know even more is that continuing to protect our precious golf is something we can't afford not to do. The interesting thing about oil spills in general is given enough time, the ecosystem will recover. It's just that we now know that the recovery times range from, you know, a few months to decades, maybe even centuries. Wendy Lane, ABC Action News.